Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you're doing well this morning. Uh, certainly still praying for those people back east uh, that were in the path of this storm. Um, the Carolinas just really, uh, I'm just seeing a lot there. I'm sure there's a lot in Florida and Georgia and stuff like that, but uh, I've got family in North Carolina, so that's why. Um, but uh, last I heard, my father did not have power, but the house was okay. He got water in the basement, but uh, his basement is all concrete, so it just washes right out, so that's not a problem. Um, might be some woodwork down there to repair, but uh, I think he's fine, and fortunately my brother's with him, so uh, so he's not alone. But uh, I'm hearing other stories of just uh, a lot of destruction, a lot of destruction, so certainly praying for you people. Um, not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but uh, anyway, praying for you. All right, well, let's get started this Sunday morning with another sip of that. That was good. Oh. All right, well, this morning we're going to start off uh, with a reading in Esther, and then we're going to Psalm 124, then we're going to Numbers, and then a passage in Psalm 19, and then the epistle lesson is from James, and then we're going to finish it up in the Gospel of Mark. So, Esther, chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, 9 and 10, and then chapter 9, verses 20 and 22, 20 through 22, sorry. So here we go. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. So the king and Haman went in, in to feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, what is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition, and the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace, but no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe and an enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very pole that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house, fifty cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on that. So they hung Haman on the pole that had, pre had been prepared for Mordecai. Then the, ang the anger of the king abated. Mordecai recorded these things, and sent letters to all the Jews who were in the, all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the fourteenth day of the month, Adar, and also the fifteenth day of the same month, year by year, as days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness, and from mourning into a holiday that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. Good stuff. Psalm 124, here we go. If it had not, not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when the anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. 
We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the hunters. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Good stuff. All right, the next reading. Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 6, 10 through 16, and 24 through 29. And here we go. The camp followers with, uh, with them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, as a wet nurse carries a nursing child, to the, to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me, saying, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, Put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers among them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy of the elders of the people, and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud, and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him, and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had gone out to the tent, so they, so they prophesied in the camp. And the young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of the chosen men, said, My lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to them, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets? and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Mm. All right. The next psalmody lesson, Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. And this one is entitled, The Law Gives Light. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Hmm. Love that. All right, well, moving right along, we're going to the epistle lesson this morning. James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. And this one is entitled, Prayer and Anointing in the Community. Are any among, among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? 
They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was human like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth, and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death, and will cover a multitude of sins. Mm, good stuff. All righty. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. And this one is entitled, Warnings to Those Who Obstruct Faith. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one knows who does the deed of power in my name will be able... Let me read that again. Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can, it, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. And this is the word of the Lord this morning. And that's good stuff. All right. Well, as usual, the, the Revised Common Lectionary offers a series of prayers. And I'd like to share those with you. And uh, this morning, there's only two prayers. So, let's get started. So, here we go. Let us pray. Loving God, open our ears to hear your word and draw us closer to you, that the whole world may be one with you, as you are one with us in Jesus Christ our Lord. And then, O oh God, our guide and help in alien and contentious places, as Esther prayed faithfully and worked courageously for the deliverance of your people, strengthen us to confront the oppressor and free the oppressed, so that all people may know the justice and unity of your realm. Amen. And amen. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day. And I'm certainly uh, still praying for you people in the uh, path of the storm. And um, it looks like we have another storm brewing. And I pray it doesn't take the same path. Uh, hopefully it won't, uh, won't do anything, but we'll see what happens. But uh, uh, praying for you. So with that, Y'all have an awesome day. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. We'll see you tomorrow morning on Coffee and the Word. God bless.